Buenos días a todos. We shall start. Good morning. Casi 150 There's uh, uh, almost 150 people attending this conference on site and over 100 people following us uh, remotely from different parts of the world, and this is wonderful. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that people can join us from Serbia, Russia, Austria, Chile, Argentina, uh, so it's wonderful, and, uh, and that is possible thanks to the new technologies. And uh, the first thing uh, we would like um, to say is that we want to fulfill two goals. First of all, an, a scientific and academic goal, which um, should be behind uh, anything organized by a university, and then a human goal, because we want to make uh, the people who join us feel at home. So, unfortunately, it is a little bit rainy in Madrid, but uh, I still hope that we can make all of you feel at home, and also feel those of you who are connected remotely uh, make you feel at home as well. Today's event is very exciting, and we're going to be talking about an issue which is extremely interesting, and it is a, a challenging issue, and uh, people, society in general, is realizing that there are some topics that need to be looked at in a reflexive way, in a very calm manner, because the proposal of transhumanism and the many ways it has been defined as a cultural, intellectual, and scientific movement which believes that we have the moral duty to improve the cognitive capacities of the human species and be able to apply new technologies to human beings, therefore changing human beings in some way uh, to remove undesirable aspects of um, uh, the human race, like disease or um, bad conscience. And, uh, and we want to tackle this issue from a fully university-based perspective, a multidisciplinary perspective, which wishes to transcend this fragmentation of wisdom that we have inherited from so many centuries of um, history. And what we want to do is propose solutions in an open way. And that is why today I want to congratulate the Razona Bierta Institute and the director of the Congress, uh, Elena Postigo, and the different teams that uh, have made it possible for us to hold this event. I also want to congratulate the experts that have joined us who are going to give us the possibility not just to uh, have a broad perspective but also a very profound one, uh, as profound, of course, as you can manage in two days. But I'm sure that we are going to be able to um, have a wide and profound approach to the topic. So congratulations to all of you who have participated in the organization of this event. Congratulations to all the participants. And I wish you the very best so that when we leave this room on Friday, apart from feeling more um, knowledgeable, we can at least have uh, some clearer ideas about uh, Transhumanism. Uh, Thank you. Good morning. Uh, the 
rector of the university was talking about raison abierta. And some of you may not be familiar with this uh, term, uh, of our, which is, of course, the name of our institute. Raison abierta was a proposal of Benedict XVI for universities, and the idea is to overcome those limitations that we sometimes uh, come up with, uh, mm, namely the idea that we can only access things that can be perceived by our senses. We need to overcome those limitations so that we can apprehend the whole of reality and so that we can ask the right questions, including the most profoundly human questions. This cannot be done if we enclose ourselves in our own personal cocoons. That is, that is why uh, universities play such a, such an important role, and this is what Benedict the Sixteenth uh, was alluding to. Um, very often, those questions, those uh, enigmas, profoundly human enigmas, cannot be responded from one specific science, and we realize that we need to enter into a dialogue with philosophy and theology. That is why we speak about multidisciplinarity. At the Francisco de Vitoria universities, we have, we have embraced that proposal by Benedict the Sixteenth, and we try and deploy it across all our activities, both in research and in our educational activities. The Razona Bieta Institute is in charge of facilitating and promoting all of these endeavors. But of course, this is done by professors and by researchers in their daily activities. At the Institute, at the Razona Bieta Institute, we make available the means necessary to make this a reality. And since we are fully aware that this is not something that can be done uh, by an isolated institution or by isolated teachers, we also organize events like this one in order to share with people across the whole world, to share this way of tackling the big challenges of our time, such as transhumanism. We also have some awards that we present every year, uh, which are meant to recognize professionals and academics who work from that point of view, who work from that perspective. So what we want is to recognize their work and put them into contact with people from around the world who have the same um, concerns. So. This conference wants to approach this question of transhumanism from a multidisciplinary point of view, and the idea is also to share concerns and uh, for future collaboration to emerge from this so that anybody that has those concerns may work together and move forward making a contribution that we believe would be very valuable for society at large. So welcome to this Congress, and uh, we are open to any suggestion or any uh, question you may have. And without further ado, I will give the floor to Dr. Postigo, who is director of the Bioethics Institute and director of this Congress. Good morning, one and all. First of all, I want to welcome all the speakers and participants, those who are attending on site and online. Thank you for being here, and thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation. And we also want to thank the university for trusting us with the organization of an event of this nature. I also want to thank the different people who have collaborated in organizing this event. It's different people from different departments. A year ago, the director of the Razona Pieta Institute, Maria, who's here with me, when she entrusted me with organizing this event, I was delighted. As you know, I have been working with transhumanism since 2007. And, um, you know, I, I, 
derivadas e implicaciones de carácter filosófico y en mi caso bioético por ser la disciplina que cultivo. I'm a big fan of transhumanism and with time the different ideas of transhumanism have taken shape. The current intellectual itinerary of the Congress will be as follows. After an opening lecture by Professor Sandberg, who unfortunately cannot be here with us, but will, who will be attending online, we will be talking about the transhumanist proposal. We, are, we have brought a transhumanist to uh, speak about uh, the proposals of uh, transhumanism. After that, there's going to be a panel discussion dealing with the historical genesis and the philosophical background of uh, this current of thought, and then we will uh, go towards an analysis of the sp concrete application of uh, transhumanism, and this will be dealt with by different panels that will deal with different things such as artificial intelligence, transhumanism, and as neo-gnosticism and conscience. Transhumanism is a wonderful platform to rethink what is human, not just the nature of the current itself, its ends and its means, but the very concept of human being that underlines the idea of transhumanism. The, f the exponential development of uh, science in the next uh, few decades will probably affect uh, transhumanism very profoundly. Uh, and it will have different um, influences on art, sport, gastronomy, and other cultural manifestations. It is a wonderful opportunity to raise very profound issues, such as um, what do we understand as human improvement? Uh, is it, should we wish for a permanent improvement of the species, and what should the ethical limits be? And what will happen with the family, with the dissolution of sexes posed by, transhuman, uh, by transhumanism? Um, is it really, is the human being a, such a perfect machine, or is the human being something else? Can the human being be immortal uh, in terms of bi uh, by psychology? What about the human heart? So all of these different queries of a philosophical and scientific and technical nature are going to be tackled at the Congress. And to answer these issues, we have invited specialists, speakers from universities in Spain and other countries, specialists in different fields of inquiry to help us overcome the fragmentation of knowledge and try and come up with a unit or a unity of, uh, of knowledge. And they will be tackling the different um, topics I mentioned. Um, we, want, we wish to recover the uh, wisdom inherent in uh, the university and uh, activity. And we want to integrate all that knowledge into a unitary vision, which is precisely the transhumanist proposal to walk towards uh, an answering of the typically uh, asked questions, right? What is in store for me, what the human being is, and what is the human being destined for? We have devoted a whole year to preparing this conference, so I hope that uh, you will make the most of uh, these two days, and I hope you find stimulus and you can exchange ideas with others. We are at your disposal for anything you may need. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy our, uh, our conference. Thank you.